the final thing today hopefully this will be the last lecture now today we are going to basically learn by doing example it says that three quarks are shown write the possible perion okay in the first part they have shown u u d and then in second one it is u d d now first of all we are going to check the mass the up quark has 1 by 3 u in fact all quarks have the same mass so if you add them up it is going to be 1 u all right then you are going to check the charge up has plus 2 by 3 e another up plus 2 by 3 and a down means minus 1 by 3 e that comes out to be plus 1 e do you guys know anything that has one mass and positive one charge sorry a proton yeah a proton Wait a second. Okay. So, which means that this is a proton, and proton has one and positive one charge, right? One mass and one charge. Now, the other one. We're going to check the mass 1 by 3 u plus 1 by 3 u plus 1 by 3 u and it's going to be 1 u. Then we're going to check the charge and charge up has plus 2 by 3 e down has minus 1 by 3 e and minus 1 by 3 e. So if you add them up it will be 0. Do you know a particle that has one mass but no charge go on a neutron very good so it is basically a neutron which is this like that so now you should remember that proton is made up of up up and down and neutron is up down down and this should be always remembered never forget all right. So, hey, Laman, Aisha, Ahmad, everybody understands this? No, sir. Okay. You forgot about the charge and masses already from yesterday? No. So. Uh, just explain. Yeah. Maybe. So. Uh, down. Oh, yes, mass. If you see, there's a combination of three quarks up, up and down, right? So first we check the mass. The mass for each quark is 1 by 3 u, right? You add the total mass, it is going to come out as 1 u. Understood? Yeah. Then when you check the charge, up has plus 2 by 3, another up has plus 2 by 3 and down has minus 1 by 3, right? Yeah. So if you add them, it is going to be plus 1 e. So proton is a particle that is one mass and one charge plus one charge do you understand yeah. similarly we did it with uh, the neutron you add all the mass together it's going to be one u but you when you add the charge up has plus two by three uh, down has minus one by three and down has minus one by three so when you add it the charge is going to be zero which means it is a neutron because it has one mass and no charge you get my point yeah okay cool now 
the next thing we're going to do is basically another example and recent papers have these a lot and this is that it says pi on positive is made up of u and d dash i mean a part uh, up quark and and anti down right so an anti particle and a particle so first question is that what type of particle it is the second question is that they say prove that it has a charge of plus 1e now a particle there there was a, there were two families that we discussed and one of those families were made up of one quark and one anti quark do you guys know what the name of family was okay that's very bad so hadrons no in hadrons if you go back hadrons had two sub families right one was mesons other was baryons baryons are made up of three quarks just like just like we did right proton and neutron and meson is a type of particle that has one normal quark and one anti quark right so if pion is made up of a normal quark and an anti quark it means this belongs to meson family is that clear now to prove that charge is this now we are going to write charge up has a charge of plus 2 by 3e and anti down has down has minus 1 by 3 so anti down will be positive 1 by 3e so you add it up it's going to be positive 1e do you guys understand this what did you get me so because i know from the definition hamad were you sleeping yesterday that i told yes. you that two it is made up of two quarks one normal and one anti quark right okay sir. now check this pi on is made up of one normal which is up and an anti quark which is down anti do you understand now yeah stop sleeping now do you understand how uh, we have done the charge you you have any questions yeah. okay very good now for any reaction any reaction in chemistry and physics and in the world is not possible unless it obeys four fundamental laws right so reactions are only possible if they obey mama four fundamental laws the first law is called the conservation of mass energy so that is given by the einstein's equation e is equal to mc square you should remember that mass can neither be created nor destroyed also energy can neither be created nor it and just shift from one form to another right the other thing is conservation of charge which means that the total charge that was before should also be after the reaction happens you cannot lose a charge or gain a charge uh, of the whole you know equation now next is conservation 
of particles. So if let's suppose there were four quarks involved or five or 10 or 20, it doesn't matter. So after the reaction, there should be the same number of quarks. Fourth is the conservation of momentum. Throughout this course, we have done these laws and you should always remember that they will always be upheld. Understood? All right. So mass energy means that in any reaction, the total mass and energy would be equivalent, which means if something gains energy, it could, you know, be from losing mass or if it loses energy, it could form mass. Do you understand? So we have learned that mass doesn't change and we have learned that energy can only go into other forms. It does not get destroyed or created. Understood? Yes. Same goes for charge. You can, whatever charge you have before the reaction, the total charge is going to be after the reaction. You cannot add or subtract charges. Number of particles means whatever number of quarks or leptons are, you know, involved in that reaction, they will stay like that. They cannot just, you know, increase or decrease. And conservation momentum is always upheld. So you should always remember that if something is like the total momentum before and after the collision must be conserved in the whole system. Is that clear? Now, the most important thing in this chapter, what I'm going to do right now, so you should focus. I want your full attention now because then you would not able to understand anything. So beta negative reaction we need to do. So it happens in one of the examples that carbon 14, which is a radioactive isotope decays into nitrogen 14, seven, it gives a beta negative particle. And along with it, it also gives an anti electron neutrino. What just happened? Why? I think I, okay. Now, if you look at this equation, first of all, you should always remember this equation. This is the atomic equation that must, you must remember this atomic level equation because it will help you, you know, do the rest of the things. For example, if you look at it, you realize that right now it has six protons and it has eight neutrons. Sir, what is VE complement? That is anti-electron neutrino, which we did here. Anti-particle of electron neutrino, okay? okay? Now, if you look at it, you'll realize that there are six number of protons and eight number of neutrons in it, right? Basically, after the reaction, you might see when it carbon turns into nitrogen. Now there is seven number of protons and seven number of neutrons. Do you understand? Along with it, an electron has released and an anti electron neutrino, which has no mass, no charge. We have written this already. If you closely look at it here, one neutron has changed into one proton and given an electron and an anti-electron neutrino. Now, this is basically the subatomic level equation as you can see so can you uh, do you guys understand this any questions here please let me know this equation 
is essential it is it always happens it's a fact that's what we're studying you know do you understand okay so yes then if you now go into uh, the fundamental level you might understand this that n- uh, a neutron has a quark composition of up down and down whereas a proton has up up and down plus an electron is given off in this equation and an anti electron neutrino if you notice both have up and down but what is really changing in this that the down quark has changed into an up quark plus an electron plus an anti electron neutrino and this is basically the funda- fundamental level equation is that clear everyone now any time he asks you this you should be able to remember this this has to be rote learned all right make sure you do rote learn it all right hamad aisha aman is it clear explain again yes if you look at this you see in carbon there are six protons and eight neutrons right that changes to seven protons and seven neutrons right you agree to this yeah gives an electron and gives a anti electron neutrino now what has increased and what has decreased from eight neutrons it goes to 7 so it means one neutron has decreased do you understand into what it has converted into a proton because if you see one proton in this in this part has increased you agree yeah plus it gives an electron and anti electron neutrino we are going to check mass and charge to verify the equation as well now if you go further deep into this you see a neutron has a, compo- a composition of up down down quark i just told you in the beginning of this lecture by doing this so this was a proton and this was a neutron remember now up down down is neutron that has converted to up down up up down that is proton you agree yeah now check this out up down in this part they have up down in this part they have up down what has really converted a down quark has changed into up because initially there was down now there is an up quark do you understand and the rest of the things are the same do you get my point now uh yes sir why does the down change in proton because neutron changes to proton that's a fact how do i know why it just changes like that do you understand this is a factual equation so okay it's a question like why are you called sohail how do i know why you are called soil it is a fact that you are called soil do you understand now whenever you need to verify an equation you need to check the mass and the charge for the first equation we are going to check the mass and the mass in this is 14 u equals to nitrogen has 14 u beta particle has 0 and electron neutrino 0 so 
both sides are 14 and 14 which means the mass is conserved now check the charge on this equation on the other side we have plus 6 charge on this side we have plus 7 charge on this one we have negative 1 e and electron neutrino anti-electron neutrino does not have any charge so basically uh, the equation becomes 6 equals to 6 which means it is also conserved so the laws are conserved is that clear now number of protons in carbon okay. yes now the number of particles are the same the only difference is the momentum why electron neutrino has released because when it breaks right so carbon is like this when it breaks it breaks into nitrogen and along nitrogen on the opposite side an electron is released and an anti-electron neutrino is released that is the reason momentum is conserved because momentum before and after should be the same is that clear all right now check this one the next one, if we check the mass on this equation to verify if it's correct, you have 1u on nitrogen, uh, sorry, neutron, equals to 1u on proton, no mass on electron and no mass on anti-electron neutrino, so 1u equals to 1u, that is conserved. And then the charge. For charge, there is no charge on neutron, there is 1 plus 1e charge on proton, there is negative 1e on electron and no charge on anti-electron neutrino. So positive 1 cancels negative 1. So 0 equals to 0, which means this is also conserved. Is that clear? Yeah. Now check the last one. So mass down has 1 by 3u, up has 1 by 3u no mass on electron no mass on uh, anti-electron neutrino so 1 by 3 u equals to 1 by 3 u this is conserved now check the charge so down has negative 1 by 3 e up has positive 1 by 3 e electron has negative 1 e plus 0 on anti-electron uh, neutrino so you add it up it is going to be negative 1 by 3 equals to negative 1 by 3 which means this is also conserved is that clear all right in any equation in any equation remember if a lepton is released alongside with that it is a must that an anti-lepton must be released is that clear will you keep will you be mindful of that i'm repeating again in any equation, if, an, if a lepton is released, then it is a must that alongside with it, an anti-lepton must be released. Understood? Yes. Khatija is here or no today? Aman, Sohail, Aisha, Khatija and Hamad. Any questions now, please let me know. No. Okay. Now let's go to the next part. Next equation that we need to wrote learn is beta positive, which is a positron, which is zero plus one equation. Now, how does it work? So nitrogen 13,7 goes to carbon 13,6 and it gives a beta positive which is a positron and because it is an antiparticle now a normal neutrino is released. Right now let's analyze this equation. First of all if you look at it very very carefully you would realize that there are seven protons in this and there are six neutrons in this 
which turns to six protons and seven neutrons is that clear plus a positron and plus a normal neutrino is that clear yes so this is your atomic level equation now let's go further down if you notice again that here one proton changes to one neutron and then gives basically there's a positron that is released and a, an electron neutrino like that so this equation that you see right now must be remembered and this is basically the subatomic equation now why if you look at very carefully you see in here there were uh, basically seven protons and in this one there are six protons which means one proton has vanished into six neutrons were here seven neutrons are here into a neutron is that clear Hamad? do you understand now Hamad? Yes, good uh, now can you please tell me what is the equation what is the quark composition of a proton i would like to hear that what what is the, uh, the quark composition of a proton proton is made up of three quarks what are those Are you writing notes? Then who is answering? Hamad is answering. Oh, I am. Uh, yeah. U, U, D. U, up, up and down. Changes to. Yes, uh, Aman. What is the quark composition of a neutron? So, up, down, down. Up, down, down. Which basically then releases a positron and an anti-electron neutrino now if you notice we have up down here we also have up down here the odd ones just take them out so you realize that up has changed into down and it has given a positron plus a, a normal neutrino now this equation should also be remembered by heart and this is the fundamental equation right And you can, even if you remember one, you can always take out the other, but doing the same thing that I'm doing. So now we're going to check the mass on this. And the mass on this is 13U goes to 13U. No mass on positron, no mass on anti-electron neutrino, oh, sorry, normal neutrino. So 13 equals to 13, this is conserved. Check the charge. It is basically 7 e positive goes to 6 e positive plus 1 e for the positron and 0 for this so it is also conserved because 7 equals to 7 then for this one mass if you check it is 1 u for the proton goes to 1 u for the neutron plus 0 for positron 0 for neutrino so 1 equals to 1 this is conserved and charge then you're going to check so plus 1e goes to 0 charge on neutron oh i wrote wrong equation here and then plus 1e for the positron and then 0 for this so 1 is equal to 1 that is also correct now then you check for the fundamental one so mass is 1 by 3u for up quark equals to 1 by 3u for down quark 0 for positron 0 for uh, a neutrino so that's conserved and then check the charge up has plus 2 by 3 e equals to down has negative 1 by 3 e this is plus 1 e for the positron and 0 for this so if you add it it's going to be 2 by 3 equals 2 by 3 which is also conserved is that clear everyone this is how you check any questions please 
when the meeting ends you're supposed to rejoin if the uh, it doesn't finish okay everybody's clear about it 100% any questions now will you be able to remember this that how i've done this yes sir okay now there are two questions that are going to be there and whenever they ask you this question you should write this answer that i'm going to write now why in the start i told you that this chapter is completely rote learning because there are a lot of facts in it that we need to just you know write down when he uh, the examiner asks so why beta particles get released now this question whenever he is going to ask you that's for one mark you're going to say beta interaction happens due to weak nuclear force and that's it all right then he's going to ask you another question which is very common and he would say why do beta particles have range of kinetic energies all right so whenever he asks this question that when betas are released not all of them have the same energy they have different kinetic energies which means they have different speeds so you're going to say other particles that are released share kinetic energy too hence in every interaction in every interaction beta particles may have different energies all right so you should always write this okay so if you have any questions about these please let me know all right now again i'm just reinforcing this in this equation that i've written here you might see whenever this you see this is an anti lepton positron is an anti lepton along this there must be always a lepton released that is the reason when in the previous equation lepton was released so an anti neutrino was released and when an anti lepton which is a positron released then normal lepton was released so you should always be mindful of this is that clear everyone any questions now okay so thankfully the course has finished this was the last thing we got to do i'm going to share you a, a worksheet all right that you're going to do and from the first week now of january we are going to start with uh, the crash course the timings will be basically shared with you very very soon all right